Benjamin Franklin FRS FRS FRSC January 17, 1706 OS January 6, 1705. April 17, 1790 was an American polymath who was active as a writer, scientist, inventor, statesman, diplomat, printer, publisher, and political philosopher one among the leading intellectuals of his time. Franklin was one of the founding fathers of the United States, a drafter and signer of the Declaration of Independence, and the first postmaster general to as a scientist. He was a major figure in the American Enlightenment in the history of physics for his studies of electricity, and for charting and naming the Gulf Stream Current. As an inventor, he is known for the lightning rod, bifocals, and the Franklin stove. Among others three he founded many civic organizations, including the Library Company, Philadelphia's first fire department formed the University of Pennsylvania. Franklin became a successful newspaper editor and printer in Philadelphia, the leading city in the colonies, publishing the Pennsylvania Gazette at age 23.9 he became wealthy publishing the St. Poor Richard's Almanac, which he wrote under the pseudonym Richard Saunders. 10 after 1767, he was associated with the Pennsylvania Chronicle, a newspaper that was known for its revolutionary sentiments and criticisms of the policies of the British Parliament in the Crown 11 he pioneered and was the first president of the Academy and College of Philadelphia, which opened in 1751 and later became the University of Pennsylvania. He organized and was the first secretary of the American Philosophical Society and was elected president in 1769. He was promoted to Deputy Postmaster General for the British Colonies on August 10, 1753, 12, having been Philadelphia Postmaster for many years, and this enabled him to set up the first national communications network. He was active in community affairs and colonial and state politics, as well as national and international affairs. From 1785 to 1788, he served as Governor of Pennsylvania. He initially owned and dealt in slaves but, by the late 1750s, he began arguing against slavery, became an abolitionist, and promoted education and the integration of African Americans in the U.S. society. Ancestry Benjamin Franklin's father Josiah Franklin was a tallow chandler soaper and candle maker. Josiah Franklin was born at Epton, Northamptonshire, England on December 23, 1657 the son of Thomas Franklin a blacksmith and farmer and his wife Jane White. Benjamin's father and all four of his grandparents were born in England. 13 Josiah Franklin had a total of 17 children with his two wives. He married his first wife, Anne Child, in about 1677 in Ecton and emigrated with her to Boston in 1683. They had three children before immigration and four after. Following her death, Josiah married Lydia Folger on July 9, 1689, in the Old South Meeting House by Reverend Samuel Willard and to ten children with her. Benjamin their eighth child was Josiah Franklin's fifteenth child overall and his tenth and final son. Early life Boston Franklin's birthplace on Milk Street and Boston Franklin's birthplace side directly across from the Old South Meeting House commemorated by a bust atop the second floor facade of this building. May 2008 Franklin was born on Milk Street in Boston, Massachusetts on January 17, 170 and baptized at Old South Meeting House. As a child, growing up along the Charles River Franklin recalled that he was generally the leader among the boys. 17 Franklin's father wanted him to attend school with a clergy, but only had enough money to send him to school for two years. He attended Boston Latin School, but did not graduate. He continued his education through voracious writing. Although his parents talked of the church as a career 18 for Franklin as schooling ended when he was 10. When denied the chance to write a letter to the paper for publication Franklin adopted the pseudonym of Silence Degut a middle-aged widow Mrs. Degut's letters were published and became a subject of conversation around town. Neither James nor the current's readers were aware of the ruse and James was unhappy with Benjamin when he discovered the popular correspondent was his younger brother Franklin was an advocate of free speech from an early age when his brother was jailed for three weeks in 1722 for publishing material unflattering to the governor young Franklin took over the newspaper and did Mrs. Deckard quoting Kedis letters proclaim without freedom of thought there can be no such thing as wisdom and no such thing as public liberty without freedom of speech 19 Franklin left his apprenticeship without his brother's permission and so doing became a fugitive. The members created a library initially assembled from their own books after Franklin wrote a proposition was made by me that since our books were often referred to in our disquisitions upon the inquiries it might be convenient for us to have them all together where we met, that upon occasion they might be consulted and by thus clubbing our books to a common library we should while we live to keep them together have each of us the advantage of using the books of all the other members which would be nearly as beneficial as a feature on the whole. This did not suffice, however Franklin conceived the idea of a subscription library which would pool the funds of the members 
members to buy books for all to read this was the birth of the library company of Philadelphia whose charter he composed in 1731, 25 newspaper and further information early American publishers and printers upon Denham's death Franklin returned to his former trade in 1728 he set up a printing house in partnership with Hume Meredith the following year he became the publisher of a newspaper called the Pennsylvania Gazette the Gazette gave Franklin a foreign vegetation about a variety of local reforms and initiatives through printed essays and observations over Tommy's commentary and his adroit cultivation of a positive image as an industrious and intellectual young man, earned him a great deal of social respect, but even after he achieved fame as a scientist and statesman, in 1732 he published the first German-language newspaper in America by Philadelphia's item, although it failed after only one year, because four other newly founded German papers quickly dominated the newspaper market. 26 Franklin also printed Moravian religious books in Germany often visited Bethlehem, Pennsylvania staying at the Moravian Sun in 27 in a 1751 pamphlet on demographic growth and disimplications for the 13 colonies he called the Pennsylvania Germans Palatine Boers, who could never acquire the complexion of Anglo-American settlers and referred to blacks and tawnies as weakening the social structure of the colonies, although he apparently reconsidered shortly thereafter and the phrases were omitted from all later printings of the pamphlet his views may have played a role in his political defeat in 1769 according to Ralph Frosca, Franklin promoted the printing press when he established himself in Philadelphia shortly before 1730 the town boasted two wretched little new sheets Andrew Bradford's The American Weekly Mercury and Samuel Keemer's Universal Instructor in All Arts and Sciences in Pennsylvania Gazette this instruction in all arts and sciences consisted of weekly abstracts from Chambers's Universal Dictionary. Franklin quickly did away with all of this when he took over the instructor and made it the Pennsylvania Gazette. The Gazette soon became his characteristic organ which he freely used for satire for the play of his wit even for sheer excess of mischief or of fun. From the first he had a way of adapting his models to his own uses. The series of essays called The Busybody which he wrote for Bradford's American Mercury in 1729 followed the general Addisonian form already modified to suit homoerotic conditions. Timothy avoided blandness and crude bias and after 1765 increasingly took a patriotic stand in the growing crisis with Great Britain. However Franklin's Connecticut Gazette 1, 7, 5, 5, 6, 8 proved unsuccessful. As the revolution approached, political strife slowly tore his network apart. Freemasonry in 1730 or 1731 Franklin was initiated into the local Masonic Lodge. He became a Grand Master in 1734, indicating his rapid rise to prominence in Pennsylvania the same year. He edited and published the first Masonic book in the Americas a reprint of James Anderson's Constitutions of the Freemasons. He was the secretary of St. John's Lodge in Philadelphia from 1735 to 1738. Franklin remained a Freemason for the rest of his life. Common law marriage to Deborah, read Deborah Reed Franklin, c. 1759, common law wife of Benjamin Franklin, Sarah Franklin Batch, 1743 to 1808. Franklin established a common law marriage with Deborah on September 1, 1730. They took in his recently acknowledged a legitimate young son and raised him in their household. They had two children together. Their son Francis Folger Franklin was born in October 1732 and died of smallpox in 1736. Their daughter Sarah Sally Franklin was born in 1743 and eventually married Richard Batch. Deborah's fear of the sea meant that she never accompanied Franklin on any of his extended trips to Europe. Another possible reason why they spent much time apart is that he may have blamed her for possibly preventing their son Francis from being inoculated against the disease that subsequently killed him. Deborah wrote to him in November 1769, saying she was ill due to dissatisfied distress from his prolonged absence, but he did not return until his business was done. A loyalist to the King William Franklin saw his relations with Father Benjamin eventually break down over their differences about the American Revolutionary Wars. Benjamin Franklin could never accept William's position. Deposed in 1776 by the revolutionary government of New Jersey, William was placed under house arrest at his home in Perth Amboy for six months. Successes in Arthur Franklin's The General Magazine and Historical Chronicle January 1741 and 1733 Franklin began to publish the noted Poor Richard's Almanac with content both original and borrowed under the pseudonym Richard Saunders on which much of his popular reputation is based he frequently wrote under pseudonyms. He had developed a distinct signature style that was plain pragmatic and to his slice off but self-deprecating tone with declarative sentences. Although it was no secret that he was the author his Richard Saunders character repeatedly denied it. Public Life Early Steps in Pennsylvania Portrait of Franklin C. 1746-1750 by Robert Fecky. 
widely believed to be the earliest known painting of Franklin Join or Dial 1754 political cartoon by Franklin urged the colonies to join the French and Indian War seven years war later served as a symbol of colonial freedom during the American Revolution. He began the electrical research that along with other scientific inquiries would occupy him for the rest of his life in between bouts of politics and money making during King George's War Franklin raised a militia called the Association for General Defense because the legislators of the city had decided to take no action to defend Philadelphia either by erecting fortifications or building ships of war he raised money to create earthwork defenses and by artillery the largest of these was the Association Battery or Grand Battery of 50 guns in 1747 Franklin already a very wealthy man retired from prison and went into other businesses he formed a partnership with his foreman David Hall which provided Franklin with half of the shop's profits for 18 years this lucrative business arrangement provided leisure time for study and in a few years he had made many new discoveries Franklin became involved in Philadelphia politics and rapidly progressed in October 1748 he was selected as a councilman in June 1749 he became a justice of the peace for Philadelphia and in 1751 he was elected to the Pennsylvania Assembly Seal of the College of Philadelphia in 1754 he headed the Pennsylvania delegation to the Albany Congress this meeting of several colonies had been requested by the Board of Trade in England to improve relations with the Indians and defense against the French Franklin proposed a broad plan of union for the colonies while the plan was not adopted elements of it found their way into the Articles of Confederation and the Constitution sketch of the original Tom Tavern in 1753 both Harvard and Yale awarded him honorary Master of Arts degrees. In 1756 he received an honorary Master of Arts degree from the College of William and Mary. Later in 1756, Franklin organized the Pennsylvania Militia. He used Tom Tavern as a gathering place to recruit a regiment of soldiers to go into battle against the Native American uprisings that beset the American colonies post-mast first U.S. When the lands of New France were ceded to the British under the Treaty of Paris in 1763 the British province of Quebec was created among them and Franklin saw mail service expanded between Montreal to trois Rivière as Quebec City and New York for the greater part of his appointment he lived in England from 1757 to 1762 and again from 1760 to 1774 about three quarters of his term eventually his sympathies for the rebel cause in the American Revolution led to his dismissal on January 31, 1774 passed signed by Postmaster General Benjamin Franklin gave William Goddard the authority to travel as needed to investigate and inspect postal routes and protect the mail on July 26, 1775 the Second Continental Congress established the United States Post Office and named Franklin as the first United States Postmaster General he had been a postmaster for decades and it was a natural choice for the position he decades in London from the mid 1750s to the mid 1770s Franklin spent much of his time in London political work in 1757 he was sent to England by the Pennsylvania Assembly as a colonial agent to protest against the political influence of the Penn family the proprietors of the colony he remained there for five years striving to end the proprietor's prerogative to overturn legislation from the elected assembly and their exemption from paying taxes on their land his lack of influential allies in Whitehall led to the failure of this mission. Franklin in London 1767 wearing a blue suit with elaborate gold braid and buttons a far cry from the simple dress he affected at the French court in later years painting by David Martin displayed in the White House during his lengthy missions to London between 1757 and 1775 Franklin lodged in a house on Craven Street just off the Strand in central London during his stays there he developed a close friendship with his landlady Margaret Stevenson and her circle of friends and relations in particular her daughter Mary who was more often known as Polly the house is now a museum known as the Benjamin Franklin House whilst in London Franklin became involved in radical politics he belonged to a gentleman's club which he called the Honest Whigs which held stated meetings and included members such as Richard Price the minister of Newington Green Unitarian Church who ignited the revolution while living in London in 1768 he developed a phonetic alphabet and a scheme for a new alphabet and a reformed mode of spelling this reformed alphabet discarded six letters he regarded as redundant CJQWX and Y substituted six new letters for sounds he felt lad letters of their own Defending the American cause one line of argument in Parliament was that Americans should pay a share of the costs of the French and Indian War therefore taxes should be levied on and Franklin became the American spokesman in highly publicized testimony in Parliament in 1766 he stated that Americans already contributed heavily to the defense of the empire he said local governments had raised outfitted and paid 25,000 soldiers to fight France as many as Britain itself said and spent many millions from American treasuries doing so in the French and Indian War alone in 1772 Franklin obtained 
private letters of Thomas Hutchinson and Andrew Oliver Governor and Lieutenant Governor of the Province of Massachusetts Bay proving that they had encouraged the Crown to crack down on Bostonians. Coming of revolution in 1763 soon after Franklin returned to Pennsylvania from England for the first time the western frontier was engulfed in a bitter war known as Pontiac's Rebellion the Paxton Boys a group of settlers convinced that the Pennsylvania government was not doing enough to protect them from American Indian raids murdered a group of peaceful Susquehannock Indians and marched on Philadelphia Franklin helped to organize a local militia to defend the capital against the mob. At the signing is quote Odeus, having replied to a comment by John Hancock that they must all hang together yes we must indeed all hang together or most assuredly we shall all hang separately Ambassador de France, 1776 to 1785, Franklin and his fur had charmed the French with what they perceived as rustic new world genius on October 26, 1776 Franklin was dispatched to France's commissioner for the United States he took with him his secretary his 16 year old grandson William Temple Franklin they lived in a home in the Parisian suburb of Passy donated by Jacques Denetin Larry D. Chairman who supported the United States Franklin remained in France until 1785 he conducted the affairs of his country toward the French nation with great success which included securing a critical military alliance in 1778 and signing the 1783 Treaty of Paris among his associates in France was honored Gabriel while in France 209 AM 5 19 2 0 2 3 2 09 AM May 19 2023 Franklin designed and commissioned Augustine Dupper to engrave the Medallion Libertas Americana minted in Paris in 1783 Franklin's advocacy for religious tolerance in France contributed to arguments made by French philosophers and politicians that resulted in Louis XVI's signing of the Edict of Versailles in November 1787 this edict effectively nullified the Edict of Fontaine at which had denied non-Catholic civil status and the right to openly practice their faith Franklin also served as American minister to Sweden although he never visited that country he negotiated a treaty that was signed in April 1783 on August 27 1783 in Paris he witnessed the world's first hydrogen balloon flight let alone created by Professor Jacques Charles and Les Frères Robert, was watched by a vast crowd as it rose from the Champ de Mars now the site of the return to America Franklin's return to Philadelphia, 1785, by Jean Leon Garam Ferris George Washington witnesses Governor Morris sign the Constitution and Franklin is seen behind Morris and John Henry Hittermeister's 1925 painting Foundation of the American Government when he returned home in 1785 Franklin Franklin occupied a position second only to that of George Washington as the champion of American independence he returned from France with an unexplained shortage of 100,000 pounds in congressional funds in response to a question from a member of Congress about this Franklin quoting the Bible quipped muzzle not the ox that treadeth out his master's grain the missing funds were never again mentioned in Congress Larry honored him with a commission portrait painted by Joseph Duplessis which now hangs in the National Portrait Gallery of the Smithsonian Institution in Washington DC death Franklin's great Philadelphia Franklin suffered from obesity throughout his middle age and later years which resulted in multiple health problems, particularly gut which worsened as he aged in poor health during the signing of the U.S. Constitution in 1787. He was rarely seen in public from then until his death. Electricity Benjamin Franklin drawing electricity from the sky C1816 at the Philadelphia Museum of Art by Benjamin West Franklin started exploring the phenomenon of electricity in the 1740s after he met the itinerant lecturer Archibald Spencer who used static electricity in his demonstrations he proposed that vitreous and resinous electricity were not different types of electrical fluid as electricity was called then but the same fluid under different pressures the same proposal was made independently that same year by William Watson he was the first to label them as positive and negative respectively and he was the first to discover the principle of conservation of charge in 1748 he constructed multiple plate capacitor that he called an electrical battery not a true battery like Veltis pile by placing 11 panes of glass sandwiched between lead plates suspended with silk cords Franklin advised Harvard University in its acquisition of new electrical laboratory apparatus after the complete loss of its original collection in a fire that destroyed the original Harvard Hall in 1764 the collection he assembled later 
became part of the Harvard collection of historical scientific instruments now on public display in its science center kite experiment in lightning rod Franklin and electricity vignette engraved by the BEPC 1860 Franklin published a proposal for an experiment to prove that lightning is electricity by flying a kite in a storm on May 10, 1752 Thomas Francis Dalbert de France conducted Franklin's experiment using a 40-foot tall 12M iron rod instead of a kite and he extracted electrical sparks from a cloud. Franklin's electrical experiments led to his invention of the lightning rod. He said that conductors with a sharp rather than a smooth point could discharge silently and at a far greater distance. He surmised that this could help protect buildings from lightning by attaching upright rods of iron made sharp as a needle and gilt to prevent rusting, and from the foot of those rods a wire down the outside of the building into the ground. Would not these pointed rods probably draw the electrical fire silently out of the cloud before it came nigh enough to strike and thereby secure us from that most sudden and terrible mischief? Following a series of experiments on Franklin's own house lightning rods were installed on the Academy of Philadelphia later the University of Pennsylvania and the Pennsylvania State House later Independence Hall in 1752. Cameron 1990 and grade 2011 say Franklin's observations concerning the increase of Mankin 1755 stands alongside Ezra Stiles' Discourse on Christian Union 1760 as the leading works of 18th century Anglo-American demography Drake credits Franklin's wide readership and prophetic insight Franklin was also a pioneer in the study of slave demography as shown in his 1755 essay and his capacity as a farmer he wrote at least one critique about the negative consequences of price controls trade restrictions and subsidy of the poor this is succinctly preserved in his letter to the London Chronicle published November 29, 1766 titled on the price of corn and management of the poor oceanography as deputy postmaster Franklin became interested in North Atlantic Ocean circulation patterns while in England in 1768 he heard a complaint from the Colonial Board of Customs why did it take British packet ships Franklin published his Gulf Stream chart in 1770 in England where it was ignored subsequent versions were printed in France in 1778 in the U.S. in 1786. The British original edition of the chart had been so thoroughly ignored that everyone assumed it was lost forever until Phil Richardson a Woods Hole oceanographer and Gulf Stream expert discovered it in the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris in 1980. This find received front page coverage in the New York Times. It took many years for British sea captains to adopt Franklin's advice on navigating the current. Once they did, they were able to trim two weeks from their sailing time in 1853. The oceanographer and cartographer Matthew Fontaine Moore noted that while Franklin charted and codified the Gulf Stream, he did not discover it, though it was Dr. Though Franklin is famously associated with kites from his lightning experiments, he has also been noted by many for using kites to pull humans and ships across waterways. George Pockett in the book A Treatise on the Aeroplustic Art or Navigation. In the air by means of kites or buoyant sails noted being inspired by Benjamin Franklin's traction of his body by kite power across a waterway Franklin noted a principle of refrigeration by observing that on a very hot day he stayed cooler in a wet shirt and a breeze than he did in a dry one to understand this phenomenon more clearly he conducted experiments in 1758 on a warm day in Cambridge England he and fellow scientist John Hadley experimented by continually wetting the ball of a mercury thermometer with ether and using bellows to evaporate the ether with each subsequent evaporation the thermometer read lower temperature temperature eventually reaching an illustration from Franklin's paper on the water spouts and whirlwinds decision making in a 1772 letter to Joseph Priestley Franklin laid out the earliest known description of the pro and con list a common decision making technique now sometimes called a decisional balance sheet my way is to divide half a sheet of paper by a line into two columns writing over the one pro and over the other con and during three or four days consideration I put down under the different heads short hints of the different motives that at different times occur to me for or against the measure when I have thus got them all together in one view I endeavor to estimate their respective weights and where I find two one on each side, that seem equal I strike them both out if I find a reason pro equal to some two reasons con I strike out the three if I judge some two reasons con equal to some three reasons pro I. Voltaire blessing Franklin's grandson in the name of God and liberty by Pedro America 1, 8, 8, 9, 9, 0. Franklin's parents were both pious Puritans. The family attended the Old South Church the most liberal Puritan congregation in Boston where Benjamin Franklin was baptized in 1706. Franklin's father a poor Chandler owned a copy of a book, Bonifacus, Essays to do good by the Puritan preacher and family friend Cotton Mather which Franklin often cited as a key influence on his life. If I have been Franklin wrote to Cotton Mather's son 70 years later a useful citizen the public owes the advantage of it to the book his first pen name, silenced a good paid homage both to the book and to a widely known sermon by Mather. The book preached the importance of forming voluntary associations to benefit society.
building no better than the builders of Babel like therefore but leave to move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessings on our deliberations be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business and that one or more of the clergy of the city be requested to officiate in that service the motion met with resistance and was never brought to a vote Franklin was an enthusiastic supporter of the evangelical minister George Whitefield during the first great awakening he did not himself subscribe to Whitefield's theology but he admired Whitefield for exhorting people to worship God through good works he published all of Whitefield's sermons and journals thereby earning a lot of money and boosting the Great Awakening when he stopped attending church Franklin wrote in his autobiography Sunday being my studying day I never was without some religious the classical authors read in the Enlightenment period taught an abstract ideal of Republican government based on hierarchical social orders of king aristocracy and commoners it was widely believed that English liberties relied on their balance of power but also the hierarchical deference to the privileged class puritanism and the epidemic evangelism of the mid 18th century had created challenges to the traditional notions of social stratification by preaching that the Bible taught all men are equal that the true value of a man lies in his moral behavior not his class and that all men can be saved Franklin steeped in puritanism and an enthusiastic supporter of the evangelical movement rejected the salvation dogma but embraced the radical notion of egalitarian democracy Franklin's commitment to teach these values was itself something he gained from his puritan upbringing with its stress D.R. Richard Price the radical minister of Newington Green Unitarian Church holding a letter from Franklin. Although his parents had intended for him a career in the church Franklin as a young man adopted the enlightenment religious belief in deism that God's truths can be found entirely through nature and reason. Declaring I soon became a thorough deist he rejected Christian dogma in a 1725 pamphlet a dissertation on liberty and necessity pleasure and pain which he later saw as an embarrassment while simultaneously asserting that God is all wise all good all powerful he defended his rejection of religious dogma with these words I think opinions should be judged by their influences and effects and if a man holds none that tend to make him less virtuous or more vicious it may be concluded that he holds none that are dangerous which I hope is the case with me after the disillusioning. Franklin's proposal which was not adopted featured the model rebellion to Tyrants's obedience to God and a scene from the book of Exodus with Moses the Israelites the pillar of fire and George the third depicted as Pharaoh that design that was produced was not acted upon by Congress and the great seals design was not finalized until a third committee was appointed in 1782 Franklin's strong they supported the right to freedom of speech in those wretched countries where a man cannot call his tongue his own he can scarce call anything his own whoever would overthrow the liberty of a nation must begin by subduing the freeness of speech without freedom of thought there can be no such thing as wisdom and no such thing as public liberty without freedom of speech which is the right of every man's islands to good no Slavery Franklin owned as many as seven slaves, including two men who worked in his household and his shop. He posted paid ads for the sale of slaves and for the capture of runaway slaves and allowed the sale of slaves in his general store. When about 16 years of age I happened to meet with a book written by one Tryon recommending a vegetable diet I determined to go into it by not eating meat. I presently found that I could save half what my brother paid me this was an additional fund for buying books. But I had another advantage in it I made the greater progress from the greater clearness of head and quicker apprehension which usually attend temperance in eating and drinking. Franklin also declared the consumption of meat to be unprovoked murder despite his convictions he began to eat fish after being tempted by fright caught on a boat sailing from Boston justifying the eating of animals by observing that the fish's stomach contains other fish nonetheless he recognized the faulty ethics in this argument and would continue to be a vegetarian on and off he was excited by tofu which he learned of from the writings of the Spanish interests and activities musical endeavors glass harmonica Franklin is known to have played the violin the harp and the guitar he also composed music notably a string quartet in early classical style while he was in London he developed a much improved version of the glass harmonica in which the glasses wrote it on a shot with the player's fingers held steady instead of the other way around he worked with a London glass Explore Charles James to created, and instruments based on his mechanical version soon found their way to other parts of Europe. Joseph Hayat, a fan of Franklin's enlightened ideas, had a glass harmonica in his instrument collection. Mozart composed for Franklin's glass harmonica, as did Beethoven. Gritano Donizetti used the instrument in the accompaniment to Amelia's aria Parche Medica Encore in the tragic opera Il Castello di Kenilworth 1821. As did Camille Saint Saint's I, Philadelphia by 1990. More than $2 million had accumulated in Franklin's philosophy. Philadelphia Trust which had loaned the money to local residents from 1940 to 1990 the money was used mostly for mortgage loans when the trust came to Philadelphia decided to spend it on scholarships for local high school students Franklin's Boston Trust Fund accumulated almost five million dollars during that same time at the end of its first 100 years a portion was allocated to help establish a trade school that became the Franklin Institute at Boston and the entire fund was later dedicated to supporting this institute.
Franklin's likeness is ubiquitous since 1928 and has adorned American $100 bills from $1,948 to $1,963. Franklin's portrait was on the hat dollar. He has appeared on a $50 bill and on several varieties of the $100 bill from $1,914 and $1,918. Franklin also appears on the $1,000 series EE e. Savings Bond on April 12, 1976 as part of a bicentennial celebration Congress dedicated a 20-foot 6M tall marble statue in Philadelphia's Franklin Institute as the Benjamin Franklin National Memorial. Many of Franklin's personal possessions are on display at the Institute. In London his house at 36 Craven Street which is the only surviving former residence of Franklin was first marked with a blue plaque and has since been opened to the public as the Benjamin Franklin House in 1998 workmen restoring the building dug up the remains of six children and four adults hidden below the home.